Somebody wearing reds going bowling. Not sure who it is, but we're going to find out. You are Locked On Huskers, your daily podcast on the Nebraska Cornhuskers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, gang, DP here, Locked On Huskers. Thank you for making Locked On Huskers your first watch and listen each and every day. And for some of you, your second watch of the day, greatly appreciate uh, for you everydayers who come through and spend time with us, your Huskers every day, greatly appreciate uh, you spending time with us. Mark Einweiler, before we get into this day, please let them know about prize picks. Thank you, DP. This episode of Locked on Huskers is brought to you by prize picks. Prize picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. They are the easiest and most exciting way to play DFS. It's just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, you just pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch your winnings come rolling in. You want to play alongside some of Prize Picks' favorite players like rapper Meek Mill and comedian Andrew Schultz? You can now find community plays under the promos tab of the app to view entries from some of the biggest names in the Prize Picks community each week. And Prize Picks even offers a reboot policy so that your entries stay in play even if one of your players get injured. For football and basketball games, if you have a player who exits the game in the first half and does not return in the second, that player is rebooted. PrizePix is the only daily fantasy sports platform with an injury insurance policy. So go to pricepix.com slash lockedoncollege and use the code lockedoncollege for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, that's pricepix.com slash lockedoncollege and use the code lockedoncollege for a first deposit match up to $100. PrizePix, daily fantasy sports made easy. DP, back to you. Thanks, Mark. Greatly appreciate it. This is a this is a big one, um, and I know I, I've said that um, because every game is the biggest game in the history of Nebraska football. In, entire every game is the biggest. Um, through this one, it's an opportunity to change some of the discussion. Um, when you start to identify who you are as a team and as a program, then sometimes statement games happen. This is the statement game. And, yes, last week against Maryland was a statement game. It wasn't the statement that we were looking for, nor the required, uh, the, the, the suggested result. Uh, the desired result, certainly not uh, the case a week ago versus Maryland. But it, traveling to Madison, Wisconsin, and the opportunity, you're facing, again, a like team in a like situation. Just like with Maryland, both teams came to the game at five and four. Both came the opportunity uh, to win their sixth game and become bowl game eligible. Both needed to redirect and change the direction of their programs and their teams. Both were trying to identify who they were so that the fan base could get behind it and fully support it. Well, the same thing can be said for Nebraska and Wisconsin this week. Look fickle and a first year coach. Uh, Matt Rule, first-year coach, new coordinators on both sides of the ball for both teams, an entirely new roster, different uh, starters at quarterback, different players, different names, uh, dealing with injuries in the running back game, dealing with uh, injuries to key players, the branding and re-imaging of these offensive lines, and then trying to figure out defensively what the personalities are of these two teams. Both programs are in – search of themselves, not a program, nor a team, have an understanding of who they are in full. And again, the difference, I want to specify the difference between the team, which is this year's version of Nebraska and Wisconsin, who they are individually as players, who they are um, based on what they do well, because that changes, that can change from year to year. And the program is the culture and the history and the lineage and the identity, the branding that is required. Now, both of these programs have some top level branding when it comes to blue blood status and who they are and what they've achieved. Um, but the team itself, this year's version within the program, both of them need some identification. Both of them require some high volume, high level consistency at doing something at the top level. Now, for Nebraska, it is, look, the offensive run game sits where it sits in the Big Ten Conference, but a real question would be, Husker fans, 
if you could choose Nebraska's running backs or Wisconsin's, Nebraska's running game or Wisconsin's, what would you say? What would you choose? And there are no wrong answers. And if you said, well, quite frankly, I, Nebraska's offense, uh, running off rush offense, ranks higher than Wisconsin. That's a statement of truth and valid. But if you're trusting your running game to win the game for you, which of those running games give you the most comfort? Nebraska first in the Big Ten uh, in rushing offense, uh, Wisconsin seventh. But I know that a lot of Nebraska fans would love to, to get comfortable and familiar with Braylon Allen as their RB1. So Wisconsin, for that matter, being that he's been beat up and hurt, but still, <laughs> it's a real thing that first in, in, in rush uh, offense in the Big Ten, uh, 29th in the country at 185 a game. Uh, Wisconsin's not bad running ball, 154 yards a game. It's just it's just not Nebraska's 185. But everything that's going to be required for Nebraska to have success in Madison, Wisconsin, starts up front with the run game. It starts in the scheme. It starts in the layout of what priority and focus is going to be and how – the game is going to be won. How is this game going to be won? Inhale, take a deep breath, and let me say it with say it with me. Over here to the side on the screen, you'll see this thing there. There. <laughs> RTDB. And for those who, who scream the scarlet and cream. Run the damn ball. Run the damn ball. And listen, there is a preference that Nebraska runs the ball. It has uh, its running backs put up numbers of success, uh, move the chain, score touchdowns, put actual points on the board. But Nebraska fans will also say we don't care if it's Jeff Sims running the ball and creating opportunities or Chopper Purdy running the ball and creating opportunity or Heinrich Harburg. doesn't matter who's behind center when it comes to running the ball because all of them have skill. We saw that last week against Maryland. Chopper Purdy came cold off the bench, hadn't played all season, and then takes the field. Nebraska, you know, on a turnover gets the ball – uh, at their own, you know, inside their own, t- uh, their own five, and Chubba Purdy takes them ninety yards. Takes them ninety yards in eight plays. Three of those plays were were significant runs by Chubba Purdy. Planned runs by Chubba Purdy. Three carries, thirty three yards. It was a big deal. I'm like, wow, okay, this, this is what we're going to do. But then their inability to actually just grind out five yards on the ground and the most critical of drives and the most critical of games showed up in loud form last Saturday against Maryland. You'd like to have a running back that you can trust. I mean, Matt Rules talked about the possibility and the idea of Gabe Urban at 240 pounds when the weather's not so friendly, just grinding and leaning on people and getting success. But Nebraska wasn't able to punch it in, and some of that's read, some of that's scheme, some of that's just simply not getting it done. But I think the key for Nebraska in beating Wisconsin is running the damn ball and everything that goes with that. We'll talk about all the things to go with that, all the things that are required for a fun run game, a successful run game, a productive run game for the Huskers. We'll be right back. Hey, gang, DP here, Locked on Huskers. Again, thank you, everydayers. Thank you. Uh, if you have not subscribed, please do so. Click the button down there get the content. Your Huskers every day. That's what we're doing. Uh, we're, I believe we're 12 episodes in for the month of no- November. Carry you through. We're going to roll, roll all the way through to December, and hopefully we'll have more answers about who this Nebraska football team and program is. We will get more of those answers tomorrow. Before we get into the full breakdown of this thing, Mark Onweiler, please let them know about Athletic Brewing. 
Thank you, DP. This episode of Locked on Huskers is brought to you by Athletic Brewing. Athletic Brewing Company has completely changed the non-alcoholic beer game. They make non-alcoholic beers that actually taste good. They're full of flavor. They're well-crafted, just like your favorite full-strength beers. And they brew over 50 styles of craft, non-alcoholic beer, including IPAs, Golden Sours, all your favorite ones. They're constantly making limited edition experimental styles to add to that variety. And the best part about drinking Athletic Brewing, you never have to worry about hangovers. No hangovers ever because there's no alcohol. You can find Athletic Brewing Company's non-alcoholic brews at a store near you or buy online at, at athleticbrewing.com. First-time customers can use the code LOCKEDON to get 15% off your first online order. That's code LOCKEDON, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N, at checkout for 15% off at athleticbrewing.com. Athletic Brewing Company, near beer. Exclusions and conditions apply. Fit for all times. DP, back to you. Thank you, sir. And just for you Husker fans, just so you understand, please, we will take a moment and applaud. My dear friend, Mark Arnweiler, this is his last Locked on Huskers. He will hand this over to Super Producer Rico. But this thing doesn't exist as it does without the one and only Mark Arnweiler. So thank you, kind sir, for what you do. Listen, as we dive into this thing, there are some numbers and some things that have to happen in full for Nebraska to have the kind of success we're talking about. And a week ago, Wisconsin playing a Northwestern team, playing in Camp Randall, the numbers, this is where the numbers can tell you a deception. Uh, Wisconsin averaged almost five yards a play offensively. Total yards, 341 yards. They were plus 17 over Northwestern, plus 17. But their inability to capitalize on drives and to finish drives showed up. And it wasn't from, you know, echo, you know, making mistakes and, and, and bumping their toe, stubbing their toe on third down because they were nine of 17 on third down. Uh, they had 17 first downs in the game. Uh, they, 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 they had one fourth down opportunity failed it, but in 69 plays, they averaged five yards a play. Both teams had had five punts. Uh, both teams had five penalties. The difference was that Wisconsin's penalty were big penalties and Northwest's penalties were not 10 yard penalties make a big difference compared to five yard ones. And that plus 25, at negative 25 that they suffered in the, in the penalty game shows up on the board. It just does. There's only one turnover in the game, and the time of possession leaned heavily toward Northwestern. Five-plus minutes for Northwestern uh, in time of possession. That is time that Wisconsin cannot uh, and did not put points on the board. The, it, it, it's some spectacular numbers for, for this thing, and, and, and I looked at it. If Tanner Mordecai was coming off a broken hand, uh, it would have been a perfect opportunity for Wisconsin to lean heavily on the run game. That's what they do with the big boys if they have the big thumpers that line up in red and white. But their inability to move the dang thing and to put points on the board in critical situations was just phenomenal to watch. Tanner Mordecai with broken hand came back, and in his first game he threw 45 passes. Now, these were not big balls. He was, he was not throwing it deep. Look, he threw 40, 45 times for 255 yards. That is not stretching the field. That is not that is game management and otherwise. Again, with the broken hand, not real sure what what you know how that plays into it. How many hits do you want him to take? Look, Tanner Mordecai actually carried the ball eight times. Wisconsin's run game without Braylon Allen is not the same. Allen carried the ball three times last week before his injury caught up to him, and he felt like, okay, I just can't go. I'm pretty sure we'll find out more Saturday morning uh, about Braylon Allen and what his uh, availability is. Uh, Cade Yacomale took over the running back position. He's RB3, and then RB4 is Jace, uh, Jackson Acker. But it's not the same as having Bray Braylon Allen. Uh, Yacomale, nine carries, 47 yards. He averaged five yards a carry. But because they were behind, those carries really have to be evaluated differently. Nebraska has the opportunity, again, through through what, how they do business. This is a rush defense that is second in the entire Big Ten. Third in the entire country. When you have a, a rush defense that is that rock solid, there's some things that you're doing well, and there's you're tackling well, you're fitting well, you're identifying plays well, especially up front. 
Nebraska is the best has the best rush offense in the Big Ten Conference. Wisconsin does not have the best run defense. They currently rank ninth in the Big Ten Conference, giving up 135 yards a game. I generally try to land between what a team offers on a consistent basis, which is 135, and versus what a team normally gets uh, over the course of those games at 185. That's somewhere in the middle that Nebraska should target at about 160 yards uh, on the ground for them to be able to do what they do. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Wisconsin's rush defense had a tough day against Northwestern. Nebraska's offense in running the ball. I, I, I think I like the matchups that exist up front for Nebraska. I like I, I like Nebraska's five material linemen from tackle to tackle. I like that five against Wisconsin. Guard play is important. Listen, I, I think we figured out that Prohaska and, and Ben Hart, um, you, you know what you're getting there. Uh, ben Scott, we know what we're getting. What you get from Latowski, Nori, uh, and, and Evans Jenkins could highlight and show exactly what kind of success Nebraska is having or not having in the run game. They need to have successful push in the run game. Why? Because that is is what will hold linebackers and allow Nebraska to have some success in the passing game as well. You need to wear down Wisconsin's uh, defensive uh, linemen. Don't let them stay fresh. Don't let the rotation matter. Um, doesn't matter what personnel is on the field. Nebraska choosing to run the ball, downhill running with not so much finesse. Three injured quarterbacks. There must be. There, there should be some call to – Listen, get the ball out of the hands of the quarterback and into the running backs. Let them take the beating. We still don't know who's playing what minutes and what order when it comes to quarterbacks. We won't know that until right before kickoff. You watch the teams as they go out in pregame, and I'll have that report from you um, for you so you can see what it is. But here's the thing. No matter who's playing quarterback for Nebraska, they're going to have to take care of the ball. They're going to have to take care of the ball. Listen, the turnover bug is vital. It's big. It's, it, 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 it has affected Nebraska's season. I'm going to say this before we go to break. It is my hope. It's my prayer. It is my call to arms and my challenge that Nebraska doesn't turn the ball over against Wisconsin. Take care of the damn ball. Run the damn ball. Take care of the damn ball. And don't, don't throw interceptions with the damn ball. Quarter play, quarterback play will have a lot to do with how this thing plays out. The same for the running backs. And again, if these are second or third team running backs who are getting their, their carry, it's a big day in, in, in Madison, Wisconsin. Again, one of these teams will get their sixth bowl, their sixth win of the season and make themselves bowl eligible. Big boys, buckle up. You're going to be the difference makers. We'll be right back. Hey, gang, and thank you again from DP here. Uh, Lincoln America, one of these teams is going bowling. One of them is a step or a loss closer to going fishing. And both much rather go bowling. This game will start up front, and we need the big guys to have a day on either side of the ball, have a day. Matchups aside, there are combinations you can put in play, whether you think you're, you're, you're good enough one-on-one -on -one to get wins, and how you manage your run game, exactly who you're attacking. What are the matchups that you like up front? Is Pahaska the win? Is Ben Hart the win? Can you double with the guard and center? Does that get you the win? Are you winning on challenges on the edge and having quarterbacks uh, getting to the mesh and making good decisions with their eyes in the right place, ball being taken care of, and then making good decisions in whether to throw, run, or otherwise? 
what will happen? Look, the quarterbacks for Nebraska, no matter who's playing quarterback, needs a, 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 a productive, almost dominant day from the offensive line. This is Wisconsin. Nine consecutive losses to the Wisconsin Badgers by the Nebraska Cornhuskers. If you're trying to get rid of that O, if the O has to go, it has to come down. It has to start with the big guys up front and then the little guys taking care of the ball. It is, it's just that simple. They have to be stout on the defensive front. Free up the linebackers, occupy your blockers, allow running your linebackers to get into in, into run lanes and make fits. Getting pressure on Tanner Mordecai without needing additional linemen help. If you can get home with three, it frees up and you get better coverage behind you. If you have to go to four, still possible, less likely. Pay attention to the days that Nebraska has up front. Hutmaker and Robinson, they have a lot in play. They've got some great young talent on the edge. They've got great back end with Jamari Butler and the Chief Borders and MJ Sherman. You've got listen, you've got folks that can get home on pressure. You've got veterans in the middle of it. You've got super athletes um, that'll move around and play the rover position and be in different places. But ultimately, for Nebraska to have success and be able to do what they want to do, they're going to have to be dominant up front. This is not a bury your head and just dig a hole in the ground and stay there sort of day. This is a playmaker's day. You're going to need to hear the names of Nebraska's defensive front in playmaker mode for plays made in order for there to be success. You're going to need to hear that Ben Hart, Haska, Scott, and company are being dominant in their push. You're also going to hear, have to hear, that Nebraska simply cannot turn the ball over and be successful against Wisconsin. Take care of the ball, take care of the guy next to you, and then do the thing that you practice all week. Don't try to do more. Don't try to be exceptional in that space. Do your job. Starts with the bigs up front. They get the work done. Could be something special. Before we get out of here, I want to say a thing. Uh, I was doing a radio show yesterday, and a thing popped up that Nebraska played in a national championship game in 1966. One of their best players was a running back by the name of Harry Wilson, a 5'11", senior from Steubenville, Ohio. It was all big eight conference, honorable mention in All-America. But what struck me was that I was not aware that Nebraska had played in. There were several national championship, and you put air quote, quote, games in it, that Nebraska participated in. This one being one that led uh, to a game against Alabama in the Orange Bowl. Actually, the Sugar Bowl. That ended up being for the national championship. Shout out to Harry Wilson, who led the Huskers the last time they went to Madison, Wisconsin, and beat the Badgers. He led them in rushing and scored a late touchdown. It's been far too long since the Huskers had that sort of success in Madison, Wisconsin. Here's to Saturday and breaking the streak. Plural. All the streaks. Break the streaks. Change the bowl game discussion. Get a win in Madison, uh, in Madison, Wisconsin, and come back and start making plans for your holiday road trip. That's it for me, DP. Locked on Huskers. Thank you for making this your first watch and listen each and every single day. We'll close with the three words we love so much. Go Big Red!